I've been in northern Canada for about 35 years. Let's put it, geographically, Canada is huge, right? And in the north, it's vast. The population is very dispersed. We've got small groups of population. 70, 80 percent of the population is Inuit, forcefully relocated from different areas, especially the Enadai area, which is north of Saskatchewan, and then the other population was from the river system. Our way of life is, um, you know, hard sometimes. There's not much the town offers. You got a lot of kids who have nothing to do. Since the start of colonization, there's been so much trauma. There's been so much pain, there's been so much hurt, families ripped apart. My dad's oldest sister was born in an igloo. That's less than 50 years of going from being in igloos and tents and these kids are growing up without really understanding who they really are. Not being able to be nomadic anymore. It's just a sword that goes on and on and on from one generation to the next. All this is from historical trauma. Right? And I always witness you know, a high rates of suicides. In some communities, they're the most common cause of death. It's not cancer that kills people there. It's not heart disease as we expect everywhere else. They're not old people, but they're young people. As a family doc, I can talk anyone out of suicides, but eventually they have to go back home. And so they'll wander around the street, they got nowhere else to go, and sooner or later, they will kill themselves. For a population of about a thousand, we expect five young people to die every year from suicide. Yeah. What I, I'm most passionate about is, is correcting this, um, hmm, how I put it, this, correcting the disparity that's occurring in our Canadian backyard, where we have higher rates of deaths among young people. It's right in our backyard. I've been trying to just help and trying to understand why this is happening. Of course, the community members taught me a lot, the elders taught me a lot. It took me a long time to understand this, right? Uh, they do not have any connection with their own culture. The best way for us to heal is that we need to heal ourselves. This knowledge got to be passed down. My name is Jimmy Napayo and I live in Alba at Nunavut. I'm the Young Hunters Program Coordinator. I get kids and uh, we take them out on the land and they learn their way of life. We started this program, our community, they wanted more traditional food in their diet and they wanted activities for kids. So we thought, well, why aren't we taking the kids out on the land to teach them how to hunt so that they could provide? So on the land-based program, the young men and boys, they grew up with a well-known hunter who can provide for them the skills and knowledge learn how to live off the land, to learn the culture. Inuit are traditionally very hands-on learners. You were taught by being put front center and learning the traditional skills, learning how to build the tools, learning how to wayfind, learning the different ice conditions. Like you can't learn about the different ice conditions in a book. You can't learn about the different ice conditions sitting in a classroom. You have to be out there 
to learn by seeing through your binoculars which caribou are the fattest, which caribou are the healthiest, which areas are the best hunting grounds. On the land, hands-on is the best way to teach. It's absolutely the best thing that, it, that you'll ever experience. You know, why is going back to the land so important for your healing? Because that's where they came from. They are very tough, right? Uh, physically, they, they're not big in size. They're quite small, but can learn how to survive. They survive the cold, they can survive the wilderness. It's pure wilderness out there. We're not expecting them to know everything and be men. We're expecting them to have fun, not be so hard on them. Just like, be, be kids, you know? Two generations ago, there were hunters, there were gatherers, there were fishing uh, for food. They were happy. What this land means to us, like, everything it means everything to us. It's, it's a place where we build memories. It's a place where we live our lives. After the hunt, they, they sparkle. They take that caribou, put it in their homes. Traditionally, we had to share absolutely everything we had to survive. It meant the survival of our, of our people. Why aren't we taking the kids out on the land to teach them how to hunt so that they could provide? I'd like to see this next generation be the generation to get up and make that change. Helping elders, helping others, sharing for their family. So now, there's a harvester program where they bring food for the elders. They are partner of the community. It'd be sad to see the Inuit culture fade away. Once we take the kids on the land, you can see the difference. They're much happier, they're more active, five years that we've had the Young Hunters program has just been eye-opening. It was such a good change for them. When they were back home, they were functioning as a family unit and helping each other out. They're sharing everything. They're proud of themselves. So far, this is amazing. These guys are alive. And I'm so grateful. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm really grateful because I was really hopeless myself. Because I couldn't help them. I'm just a band-aid. <laughs> I always patch the hole, uh, but the hole gets bigger and bigger. Eventually, you, you know, it just, it just collapse. <laughs> but now there's hope. There's great hope. And I hope it, we can continue for a long time. And to do that, I think we need to continue with uh, Tell, telling the story.